All right, man, peace. So I recently uploaded a four-part series pertaining to the rise and fall of the Shaq and Kobe Lakers. And in part four of that series, Shaquille O'Neal stated that the term NBA stands for nothing but actors, which was very interesting to me because overall in life, the vast majority of people that we encounter are pretty much just actors. Every once in a while, the Most High will bless you by having you come across a truly sincere person who can add something to your life and hopefully you'll be concerned with adding something to their life and trying to elevate them or empower them to some degree but for the most part most of the people that we come across are actors so just hope that the people that you allow into your life are sincere and are genuine so on and so forth why am i bringing all this up because another term for an actor in your life is a friend of me someone who tries to act as if they're concerned with your well-being but in all actuality, they're just trying to get to know you from the standpoint of trying to see how to disenfranchise you or dethrone you in some way if you're in a position of power. And that seems to be what's going on with the rapport between Mr. LeBron James and Mr. Draymond Green. They seem to have a very strange relationship with one another. I wouldn't quite call them friends from what I've seen. Certainly not enemies, hopefully not. They're two so-called successful black men. They have no reason to be enemies with one another but they could be frenemies who knows Draymond Green recently was featured on the first episode of LeBron James's HBO special The Shop so we'll see if he makes any more appearances of course the rapport the relationship the dynamic between Draymond and LeBron was first noticed in the NBA Finals in 2016 where LeBron James was very successfully able to push the buttons of Draymond Green which subsequently resulted in the Golden State Warriors giving up a 3-1 lead in the finals. So anyway, we're going to explore their relationship. Of course, they're going to talk about it, and I'm going to chime in. But first, LeBron's new show, The Shot, made its anticipated debut on HBO last night, and it's currently streaming on HBO Now and HBO Go. Now, one of the most interesting comments were directed at LeBron from Draymond Green. I think Ron over the last four years became LeBron James. And it wasn't nothing to do with winning. It wasn't nothing to do with stats. He found himself. People didn't start to view him as they view him now until he became that force, that man to say, I'm here. Let me say this very quickly, because as you can see, LeBron James is in tacit agreement with what Draymond Green is saying. But I believe that LeBron James fully was able to assert himself as being the alpha male, not just for his team, but also for the entire NBA, when he decided to leave Miami and go back to Cleveland. And of course, that role, that paradigm for him in the NBA was cemented when he was finally able to defeat the Golden State Warriors in the 2016 Finals. And I believe that the main reason why Draymond is saying this is because, as I've stated in previous videos pertaining to LeBron James, he is not the Michael Jordan of today's NBA. He is the Wilt Chamberlain of today's NBA. And Draymond Green understands that the dynamic between the Golden State Warriors, the team that he's on, and the LA Lakers that feature LeBron James is going to be very similar to the dynamic between the Bill Russell Celtics and whatever team Wilt Chamberlain was playing on. Wilt is going to put up big numbers, but they're going to lose. And as we go forth in the LeBron James narrative, the LeBron James saga in the NBA, we're going to see exactly that. That the LeBron James system, which he happens to be captain of, of course, that's his namesake, is not effective against highly intelligent teams. So that's why it's no skin off of Draymond Green's back to sit right there in LeBron James' barbershop and admit straight to his face that he is the alpha male in the NBA. Because Draymond knows that he himself is the alpha male on the best team in the league and LeBron James can't do a damn thing about it. I feel like for years he shied away from saying I'm here. And when he started to say, like I'm, oh, I'm here, that's when he became who he is. And no one would have ever said that until he did it himself. But Mike, because Mike was like, I'm Mike with my hoop and ring. Oh, y'all, I'm here. Now, did you see how LeBron James started smiling when Draymond Green noted the difference between LeBron James and Michael Jordan, personality wise? How Draymond Green stated that. People loved and gravitated towards Jordan, or at least that Jordan aura, 
because Jordan never ever shied away from the notion that he was the best player. Michael Jordan thought that he was better than Larry Bird and Magic Johnson from day one. He wasn't, but he thought that he was. LeBron James, I don't believe, ever felt like he was the best player in the NBA until 2014. Even though he was most likely the best player in the NBA from the late 2000s, of course, the Kobe Bryant fans will get very upset by that. It is what it is. Point being that if Kobe had one edge over LeBron James that I think that we would have seen had they met in the finals, either in 2009 or 2010 or, or even 2008, what we would have seen very quickly is the difference between someone who thinks on an alpha male level, which is Kobe Bryant, and someone who was trying to approximate alpha male level in LeBron James. Now, to me, the talent and physicality disparity is as big as the mental disparity between Kobe and LeBron. So it would have been very interesting to see what would have happened. But I think that the Kobe-led Lakers would have defeated LeBron James and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the finals, not because Kobe was better than LeBron, but because Phil Jackson would have been better than whoever was coaching the Cleveland Cavaliers at the time. I believe it was Mike Brown. So once again, just getting back to the point, Draymond Green, barely being 30 years old, even he understood or understands the difference between Michael Jordan and LeBron, and LeBron understands it as well. That's why he gave that wry smile and turned away. Because LeBron is always going to consider Michael Jordan his surrogate dad. That's why he'll go out of his way to mention Michael Jordan, whether it be in some type of complimentary way or even in a derisive way by trying to exalt himself as being more socially conscious than Jordan in whatever little silly ways that he tries to do it. I'm here. And until he did that, that's when he became the figurehead that he is. So many people shy away from that, and that's why they never reached their full potential. I agree with that, sir. In other words, what Draymond Green is saying, so-called black man, believe in yourself. First of all, this was exceptionally well done, and I was uh, glued to every second. Also... Wine carrying Draymond needs to be like the next meme. Uh, but Brian, are you surprised a rival like Draymond encouraged LeBron to take ownership as the best NBA player with maybe one of his teammates? Is Do you see also that LeBron face? No, I'm not surprised that Draymond did it. Why is that? Because as I've already noted, Draymond understands that LeBron is not a threat to their squad. He is not a threat at all to the Golden State Warriors. And number two, let's also understand that Draymond Green is now a business partner of LeBron James. So it will behoove him to ingratiate himself to LeBron to a certain degree so that he can maximize his own earning potential off the court in his affiliation with LeBron James and Co. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I guess that's what he was talking about. Congrats to uh, Maverick Carter and Randy Mims, who was mm. listed as a creator of that show. Allegedly, they were the creators of that show, but I have a hard time believing that Maverick Carter and Randy Mims and whoever else makes up the LeBron James proverbial brain trust said to one another, LeBron, you know what we've been thinking? You know who will make the perfect host for the shop? John Stewart. <laughs> There's no way that they had full creative control over that show, and the first person that popped into their mind to host the show was John Stewart. There's a so-called Caucasian Jew behind the scenes somewhere that told them, that they're going to have Jon Stewart host the show. There's no doubt about it in my mind. Um, so I found the dream. I know there was a lot of stuff they talked about. Um, some of the stuff was socially issues. Mm -hmm. Some of the stuff was uh, about racial issues. But I was fascinated by the by the dream on stuff because the dream on LeBron relationship is so prickly and bizarre. And it's not bizarre. It's called frenemy. It happens all the time. You just have to be able to spot a frenemy. Because people will try to get close to you, especially if they see that you have a high level of ability or certain gifts. And they want to see what the source is of your blessing. They want to see if they can figure out how to leech from it in some way. So I don't marvel at all about the rapport between Draymond Green and LeBron James. And they may eventually grow to be legitimate friends if they're not growing into that direction already. It pretty much happened near the end of Magic Johnson and Larry Bird's careers where they started off as quote-unquote enemies, and then they became frenemies, and then near the end, they became friends. So we'll see what happens. But that's all over the NBA. With Magic and Isaiah Thomas, it was actually the opposite. They went from friends to frenemies to enemies. And now, fortunately for them, they've been able to redeem their relationship. 
or Michael Jordan and Charles Barkley. They went, I won't even say that they were ever friends because I'm not quite sure if Charles Barkley was ever Michael Jordan's friend. <laughs> I know that Charles Barkley believes that Michael Jordan was his friend, but I'm not quite sure if Charles was ever Michael Jordan's friend. I think that Charles was more Michael's court jester. And unusual because, yeah. By the way, he they're didn't frenemies. To, yeah, he didn't have to be one of his last four years because you know I beat him three out of the four times. <laughs> you know, they and yes, Cassidy Hubbard. Yes, they are frenemies. Good evaluation on your part. They had this moment this year. Draymond got into it on the court and then apparently at a club with LeBron's, you know, t teammate and real close friend uh, Tristan Thompson. And yet they are business partners together yep. on this show. They are business partners together in Uninterrupted. And they're sitting there and there's Draymond, you know, complimenting him as the best player while he's a teammate of Kevin Durant, who kind of may think that he's really the best player now. Right. I mean, like beyond the context of what he said, which was interesting. I mean, well, Draymond is very shrewd. So I'm sure that he's going to go back to KD and tell him, look, I'm just telling LeBron James what I think he needs to hear to destabilize him in some way utilizing certain arts of war on LeBron James. I'm sure that that is what he's going to tell KD. But at the time that Draymond was in the barbershop, I guarantee you that at that moment, he was being sincere with LeBron James because he's not in fear of what LeBron can do in regards to being a part of a group setting. Basketball is a team game. Yes, LeBron is individually the most dominant player in the NBA, but once again, it is a team game. And LeBron James does not know how to maximize his teammates because he's not comfortable playing in a real system. That is where KD has LeBron beat. KD can actually play in a real system. LeBron cannot. Well, you know, the point that he's trying to make is like valid and we could talk about that. But I'm just more thinking, think about all the complexities with LeBron and Draymond and everything that's going on with these guys. And Draymond's like paying him a compliment but at the same time it's kind of a semi compliment and mm -hmm. LeBron's giving him like the eye like what are you talking about man and like being careful I, I would love to get around these guys when the cameras weren't on and see how they really talk to each other but I, you, you are have they to, really friends yeah you think they're really friends now? I don't know what they are man I, I will have to admit though it did feel like uh, we were seeing like a raw conversation LeBron in, in, a, in a light we haven't really seen him before even though he has been opening up more Cassidy Hubbard all the world is a stage, and everybody in it is merely a player on that stage. No, I do not think that they're actually quote-unquote friends. There's a big difference between someone that you're friendly with and an actual friend. As I've stated before, when you read the scriptures, it tells you that there is a friend that's thicker closer than a brother. It tells you that friends are born for adversity. Would Draymond Green be there for LeBron? If he went through an adverse situation, maybe he would, but who knows? With a real friend, it's not even a question whether they would be there for you in a moment of adversity. Either way, they could just be workplace friends. And as I referenced at the opening of this video, the great Shaquille O'Neal stated that NBA stands for nothing but actors. So who knows? Got more and more. Do, do you, what do you think first of Draymond and the LeBron relationship? Well, LeBron's been there, the best player for years and years. But as I watch the conversation between those two guys, it's like wrestling villains. You think, <laughs> well, what's real and what's fake now? Because I thought they legitimately really didn't like each other. And then I see the show and I'm going, huh? Was that all for show? No, was that was when, when Draymond hit him in the groin. That was real. There was nothing to <laughs> show about that. But what's the difference now? I mean, if you're... Business, money, if, partnership, if understanding. You're, but if you're... Absolutely, that's all there is to it. They're business partners right now. So in the process of being business partners, they're working together and they're building a strong business relationship that who knows could metamorphosize into something better, greater, hopefully for them. You're LeBron. Not that complicated. He's been there and he's been on top for, for forever as far as an NBA career is concerned. What was he before? If he's just coming into his own as LeBron now, what was he before? Okay, so what he was before was the most naturally physically gifted player in the NBA for the past 15 years. That's what he was before he finally figured out his proverbial NBA manhood. He was a boy child running around the league who could run faster than everyone, who could jump higher than everyone. But he didn't have what it took to lead his team to the finals because he was not a man. He was a proverbial basketball boy. That's what he had to learn in Miami by his own admission. 
talking best about player. Draymond specific comments. Yeah. About, do you agree that LeBron's different from you know from even four years ago? My like you're saying he's always been the best player, but what Draymond to me was saying was that he's he's now owning it that he's the best player in a way because he because I think a big criticism of LeBron was that he worried too much about what other people thought. Um, and, there's definitely a major difference in LeBron James psychologically. There is no doubt about that. There is a huge difference between the LeBron James of 2011 and the LeBron James of 2016 and onward. That is why he's able to make clutch shots with such a sense of freedom and relaxation. When you watch LeBron pull up from three or pull up for a long jump shot in big moments, whether it's in the regular season or the playoffs, he always seems very relaxed because he knows that for the most part, he's already proven what he's needed to prove over the course of his career. Now everything else for him is just frosting on the cake. Um, and of him, and now he's just, you know, yeah, I'm the best player, and it's more universally accepted. Yeah, I think Cash make a good point. I think LeBron became LeBron in Miami, okay? That was where he sort of got his graduate degree, or, you know, he, he went from being a player of potential to a player of, of delivery. But I do agree that his time in Cleveland, we saw the fruits of that. Well, like, winning that championship was maybe... Yeah. I mean, to me, that's the, the greatest, accomplishment, the greatest accomplishment of his career. But even if he hadn't won that, he still would have been one of the greatest players and one of the greatest voices we ever had. But I do think it's just... Well, if LeBron James had not won the championship in Cleveland, his detractors would have had far more ammunition. He knew that it was very important for him to win that championship in Cleveland, because what that provided was the springboard for him to eventually leave. And that's why I stated well over a year ago that Kyrie Irving should be thinking about leaving the Cleveland Cavaliers. Because if he was that upset with LeBron James, he had to understand already that LeBron was planning on leaving him high and dry. And we see the only reason why LeBron was desperate to keep Kyrie on Cleveland was because he needed Kyrie to give him the best chance to possibly win a championship with the Cleveland Cavaliers a second time but he was going to leave either way. That's very, very obvious that he had planned to go to the LA Lakers for a long time because one of the main reasons why he agreed to build that school when Nike brought him that project was that that was going to be an appeasement to the city of Akron slash Cleveland when he left. That's why they opened up the school the summer that he left. Obviously, they laid down the blueprints years ago. So as soon as they were plotting out the school, they had already known that they were going to leave for L.A. That's why I stated in part one of the series, L.A. Braun heads to Hollyweird, or whatever the title of that video is. It's very clear to me that all of this has already been pre-plotted for Mr. LeBron James, who was a major asset in the entertainment industry. Kyrie was able to outthink LeBron, also with the tutelage of Mr. Kobe Bryant, who's also a high-level Luciferian wizard. <laughs> in the sports world, and that frustrated LeBron James. There's got to be something about Draymond complimenting the last four years, knowing that he's pretty much won the last four years. <laughs> but he knows the last four years. Yeah. I think the other part to me that's interesting, guys, is you look at Kevin Durant, and Durant's going to watch this or hear about it and go, really? Because I think the end is near for LeBron as the number one guy. I think Durant is the guy who's going to come into his own soon probably this season as well there are the guy. there are people who would already say that he's passed lebron as the best not player. if you ask clyde drexler well <laughs> if you wants to put asterisk the way lebron controls a game and i think cassidy hubbard meant clyde frazier not clyde drexler and it provides leadership is still on a higher level but there are basketball people that i trust and believe in and respect who would tell you that duran is actually at the top right now and so again hey there are a lot of people who state that I, for one, believe that LeBron is still the best player in the NBA in regards to dominance and impact. I think that he still has a slight mental edge over KD. But if someone were to say that they think that KD is the best player in the NBA, I would not haggle with them for too long because KD is very, very close to LeBron offensively and defensively, he's much better. I just think that LeBron has a very slight mental edge over Kevin Durant. You know, really not even that slight. I think that LeBron James, he um, mentally... He's quite a bit ahead of Kevin Durant right now, but as a skill player, Kevin Durant brings more to the table overall than a LeBron James does. The, the, the relationship between Durant and his teammates is one of the most fascinating mm -hmm. things in here, and I understand.
on both offense and defense I'm talking about. I understand. He's on LeBron's show. He's in LeBron's barbershop. LeBron's sitting in the big chair, by the way. You know, if you notice the way the whole thing was laid out, you know, John Snoop. Yeah, that wasn't by accident. Snoop had a couple of awesome lines. Snoop is sitting on the side couch. LeBron is in the throne. (laughs) And Draymond is down there. So I understand you're praising the guy who showed it. By the way, LeBron had final cut. You know, he was going to make sure oh, yeah. like that. <laughs> right. So, but I mean, so he's complimenting the host. You know, it may not be the whole way he right. feels, but I just thought it was fascinating. I actually am really interested what, how the next episode's going to go because obviously there's a lot about LeBron, but of course he is one of the most fascinating athletes slash celebrities in the world. So we'll see who maybe they have on next uh, and how the conversation can. But anyway, that's basically it on the dynamic between Mr. Draymond Green and LeBron James. We'll see how their relationship manifests itself on the basketball court this up-and-coming season when the L.A. Lakers square off against the Golden State Warriors. So peace.